Briefcase Crimes contains graphic descriptions of violent events, loud dog noises, and very bad jokes, and is not suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, listeners, to Briefcase Crimes. I'm Hannah, and I'm full of terrifying facts about horrific events. I'm Liz, and I'm full of morbid curiosity. Hannah. Elizabeth. So, today is a little different. It's topsy-turvy backwards day. So, today, I am going to be telling a story to you. I'm so excited. This is also different, not because... I'm the storyteller this time, but because this is a little bonus episode, Halloween bonus, and our story is not going to be a crime today. Nope. So I'm going to be telling you the story today of the Flatwoods Monster. I'm so excited. So this is a cryptid. A cryptid I've never heard of. Well, it's a West Virginia cryptid. Oh, so I'm so thrilled. You, I've made you slides. Not a lot, but I did <gasps> want to give you there some. They are. Yeah. Oh I my went... god! Now I get to go to the prison. Oh my god! <laughs> so I, so I'm used to sitting so that I'm like halfway between looking at you and halfway between looking at my like outline, mm-hmm. and it's so weird to just be able to give you like pretty much my undivided. Attention. Yeah, I know. I'm very excited. I don't know what to do with myself. So let's get into it. Go on to your first slide. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm like stupid excited. Ooh. So it's a map. What? <laughs> so this map on the left, I have all of the counties in West Virginia. So mm-hmm. you know where I live. Yes, I do. The cryptid encounter that we're going to talk about today occurs in Braxton County. Oh, it's like right in the middle. Yes, it's that yellow one right dead it said in the center. And then on the l- right side... I can never tell my left or my right, just like I have no it's memory. Um, we've got a couple of pin drops on this map. You'll notice the little heart in the top right corner. That yes. is a leftover little pin on Google Maps from our road trip that we took. No, it is not. Yes, it is. So what? that is the mounds. No. Oh, really? Yes. So that pin is actually representative of the lunatic asylum across the street. Okay. If you recall. I do. So it's extremely close to where we were on our road trip. However, we are going to be looking at Flatwoods, which is the center blue square pin. Can I say? Yes. West V, you have got some names, some town names. Oh, yeah. Like, just off the bat, looking at... First of all, this place is just called Home. Yeah. You've got Home, Strange Creek, Duck. Yes. I like my favorite is, first of all, Elizabeth. Because <laughs> there has to be one. Yeah, of course. And uh, I like Brohard and Burnt House. There's Craigsville also. Oh my god! In the bottom we right. Like, we need like a Kyle's Spring and like Ros- Rosie Town. Yes. But I also included, you'll see, you'll notice the map is like really wide to the left side. Mm-hmm. And I did that to include Charleston because that's mm-hmm. the nearest large city. So it provides a little bit of context here. Now Charleston's technically in Clay County because the whole county of Braxton is outlined on this map. So, but that gives us a little bit of perspective on where Plus, we are. This is going to make me sound like a hundred year old woman because I know that like young people don't say these kinds of things and I don't know when I got this old, Mm -hmm. but I can see that 79 runs right through this. So like if you're traveling to Charleston from most places, you're probably going to go through these areas. Right. Yeah. Because West Virginia is kind of weird with their highways. I think just because there's like not really a whole lot going on in West Virginia. So like 79 is, is like the highway. (laughs) Mm-hmm. It's, like, the only, like, really major north-south highway. So. Yeah. I recognize it yeah. from, from my travels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so we are going to come back to this map because, obviously, there's a couple more pins on it. But we're going to start out in Flatwoods. 
as our monster is named. So before I tell the story, I'm going to be referring to it as the Flatwoods monster this whole time. However, some of my quotes might list it as something else. It is also known as the Braxton County monster, the Mm. green monster, and the Phantom of Flatwoods. The green monster is not very creative. No, it's okay. it's really not. Um, <laughs> they didn't try at all. It, it makes sense, but like, you know. Meh. We are a simple people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, at dusk on September 12th, 1952, it's about mm-hmm. 7.30 p.m., three young boys are playing in the Flatwoods Elementary Schoolyard. Okay. These boys are 13-year-old Ed May, 12-year-old Fred May, who are brothers. Okay. Are and they twins? No. Okay. Ed and Fred, I know. But no, it's... Okay. <laughs> I guess I could have listened to their their ages. That's okay. I did not. <laughs> All I heard was rhyming names. Yeah. And their friend, 10-year-old Tommy Hire. Okay. So they're playing in the schoolyard. And they notice a red blinking light streak across the sky and then crash into the ground at a nearby farm. No. Yes. Oh, man. So (laughs) they're like young boys. What are they going to do? I'm excited already. (laughs) They decide to go check it out. On the way to the farm, they actually have to go past the maze boy's house. So they pop in. And they tell their mother, Kathleen, what's going on. That's responsible. Very, right? I think if it hadn't been on the way, though, they probably wouldn't have. I know, but still, if I was that mom, I'd be like, cool, I raised some good kids that had rhyming names. And they're definitely, like, telling other people in the neighborhood, like, as they Mm. go. Because Mm -hmm. by the time they depart for this farm, there's seven of them. So it's, it's the three original boys. The May's mother, Kathleen. So Kathleen May. Okay. A 19-year-old named Jean Lemon, who is a member of the National Guard. Okay. And a couple other boys and one of their dogs. Does the dog count in the seven? Uh, No, the seven. So technically there are eight of them. True. Which I saw something that had dog's name. Hold on. I didn't put it in my notes, but I think. We need to know the dog's name. Why you why you look that up? I super love that Kathleen was like, "What? A light flew overhead and crashed by a farm. I got to I got to see this." Right? Like, I'm with you boys. Maybe that's where they got their sense of adventure. Maybe. What where year did you say it? this was? Late 50s? 52. They, oh, early 50s. So this is like Ricky. I bet you they saw it. Ricky the, <laughs> the dog. Ricky the alien Ricky. hunting dog. Yes. <laughs> I wonder if this was this reminds me a lot of like not really the movies of the time but movies that are set during this time where they like think everything is either aliens because of the space race or mm-hmm. everything is like communism yeah and that's cited like because obviously something like this with a cryptid right not everybody mm-hmm. believes it you know it's it's sketchy at best so a lot of people said, oh, they were just terrified because of the Soviet Union. There had been, like, atom bomb tests and stuff. So, like, there was a lot of that happening in the background of this, for yeah. sure. So Ed, Fred, Tom, Kathleen, Jean, two other boys, like young boys, and... And Ricky the alien hunting dog. <laughs> <laughs> they head up to this farm on a hill where the light crashed they find the crashed object and quote ran back in sheer and credible terror well what did they think they were gonna find i don't know they weren't ready to find something that's the thing is like nobody talks about what they thought they were gonna find i think it just got overshadowed by what they did find i guess but like you're walking up there you're Hope, you're hoping to find something. I wonder if they thought that it was like a plane or something. Oh, Nothing maybe. said that, but I could see like, oh, flashing red lights. Like they think it's a plane or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, maybe they th- even thought it was a bomb, which would have been really stupid to run toward a bomb. But like, maybe. I just figured they were like, that is something. Yeah. 
that is going, and I know it landed, Uh because I heard it crash or whatever. I saw it crash. Right. So when I get there, there's going to be a physical thing there. Like, I'm ready to see a thing. Mm Mm-hmm. The first account that we have, because immediately after this happened, Kathleen May and Jean Lemon reported it to the authorities. Good. So the we're going to talk a little bit about what everybody said that they saw, and mm-hmm. we're going to start off with Jean. So he was 19 at the time. He was leading the group. Mm -hmm. And he claims to have seen what appeared to be a pair of bright eyes, like lit eyes, in a tree. And he said that he screamed, fell backwards, because he saw a 10-foot monster with a blood-red body and a green face that seemed to glow. Mm. He also said that it may have had claws for hands. But it was hard to tell because there was a dense mist over the area. So not hands that had claws on them, but claws for hands? That's what he said. That's a quote. Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, that's a quote from a newspaper. So that is a a quote that he said, claws for hands. Okay. So blood red body, but the green monster, I guess, comes from its glowy face, like a glow worm? Well, we'll see because there's some colorized pictures and stuff that we'll get to later. So you'll see. It'll be in the brief. I'm excited. Yeah. In an article for Fate magazine, the there is a description from the eyewitnesses that also said that the creature had a large pointed hood-like shape around their face. The shape supposedly emitted this greenish-orange light, and it had a dark black or green body. So we've got a lot of different, like, like it's all kind of in the same family, but everything's mm-hmm. like a little bit different. Mrs. Kathleen May described the figure as having claw-like hands, clothing like folds, which I'm not really sure what that's supposed to mean. That's a direct quote also, clothing like folds. Okay. And maybe maybe she means that it wasn't wearing clothing, but its skin or its exterior was Mm. foldy as if it were clothing. Possibly. Yeah, possibly. That's what I would take it to mean. Mm Mm-hmm. And Mrs. May said that its head, like the shape of its head, Mm -hmm. resembled the ace of spades. So we're getting into like that pointed hood shape. Yeah. According to her story, the figure made a hissing sound. Ew. I don't like that. Glided towards the group. And that was when Gene Lemon screamed, dropped his flashlight, and it caused the whole group, all seven in the dog, to run away together there is also uh, one particular article that says specifically that the dog ran with its tail between its legs rude (laughs) don't don't libel the ricky the dog right are they sure because this has all the hallmarks to me of a terrible terrible owl well, okay, that's sure really this isn't funny. A terrible, terrible owl. It's really funny that you say that because I'll talk a little more about it later. But a lot of people who are naysayers think you just saw an owl in the tree, and that's why it looked to be so tall. I'm not mm. kidding. A lot of people think it was just an owl up in a tree. Was it the owl from the library in Avatar? <laughs> Maybe like that huge one. Yeah, but it it does check all the boxes. It's got of an owl for hands. <laughs> It's got big glowy eyes. It would hiss. It hisses and flies at you like a nasty rat. A lot of people think that's Ugh. actually what it was. So maybe. Well, then, you know, this isn't true crime, but it does already share a lot of similarities with the staircase. So. Yeah. And you just hate owls so much. I hate them. I hate them. <laughs> They're the worst. And it sounds like I would hate this thing, too, if I ever ran into it. The group also said that they smelled a pungent mist. That's what they described it as, just a pungent mist. And some of them said that the smell actually nauseated them. Like it was so sickening that they were nauseous. I wonder pungent how. Well, I'll I'll get into another account that describes it differently later. Okay. So we'll we'll get to that. I don't want to jump so ahead too far though. Adding on to this, it's it's emitting a stink mist. Yeah. So it's stinky. There's a <laughs> fog. It's hissing at you. It's oh. glowing lights, and it's ten feet tall. Okay. 
Forgive me if I never visit West <laughs> Virginia again. Another one of the accounts said that one of the young boys, I don't know which one, it did not specify, but one of the young boys wet himself because he was so terrified. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen and Jean reported it, right? Oh my God, we have so much rhyming. I know. <laughs> and I'm like, not sure, like first names, last names. It's Mrs. May and Jean Lemon. Yeah. Uh, They reported it to the local sheriff, and the local deputy had been investigating reports of a crashed aircraft in the area. So other people clearly saw this thing, like, crashing. The deputy said they searched the site of the reported monster, but saw and heard nothing and smelled nothing. So dissipated. Right. The stink. The next day... Lee Stewart Jr. of I think he was he was a publisher for one of the local papers claimed that he went to the site and he saw skid marks in the field and an <laughs> odd gummy deposit which were Ugh. yeah which were subsequently attributed to evidence of a saucer crashing or landing there. Mm-hmm. This made local news. And then the local news made national news. Of course. The story was picked up, covered all over the country in the radio, and big newspapers covered this. And Mrs. May and Jean Lemon actually ended up, this got picked up so majorly across the country, that the two of them actually ended up going to New York City to be interviewed by CBS about the encounter. Wow. Yes. So this was major. One of the newspaper publishers that covered the story was quoted as saying, these people were the most scared people I had ever seen. He also went up to the hill himself, the farm, Mm -hmm. with a shotgun after witnesses told him what they had seen. And he just said, you know, people don't make up this kind of story that quickly. But he didn't Mm -hmm. find anything when he went up. State police basically blew them off. Well, yeah. Yeah, they thought that everyone, all seven of them, including the dog, eight including (laughs) the dog, were just hysterical. Did they interview the dog? (laughs) Probably not, but they wrote them off as hysterical. The police also said that the so-called monster had grown from 7 feet to 17 feet in just 24 hours. So they just weren't taking it seriously, like, at all. Yeah, well, but if but if you think about it from a state police standpoint, like, what it's a you're claiming there's a monster in the woods. I'm sorry, like. I'm here to, I'm, like, working a murder case Yeah. right now. Right. Maybe not in Flatwoods, West Virginia, but, well, in that case, what else do you have really to do? Right. So, go <laughs> ahead to your next slide. Okay. So, on the left, that is Jean Lemon. Okay. And on the right, that is Mrs. Kathleen May. Oh, her Betty Bangs. Right, and her glasses. Yes. And the cape and everything. If there is an episode <laughs> where we do not gush over someone's vintage fashion. I know, right? Even in our special, special <laughs> cryptids mini episode thing, we're still going to gush over vintage fashion. It's yes. just what's going to happen. So this drawing that they have between the two of them was basically the like crime scene illustration that was drawn from their descriptions of what they saw. And if you look closely, you can see in the picture there's like a man. Mm -hmm. I assume he's for scale. Yes, exactly. So then this picture has, like, just been taken. If you go to the next slide, you'll see the picture in more detail on the right. And on the left, that is basically, like, a photo collage that was put together to, like, place the Flatwoods monster like in the woods like in the scene where it would have happened okay okay yeah like we saw it over here by this tree and they were yes. like okay so it looked like this in scale of the tree right but the poster on the right side this crime scene drawing this whole story you know because it became national it was a big deal it was printed as a poster this illustration And Mm -hmm. in the Welcome Center in Braxton County, 
it's also now a museum it's also now the flatwoods monster museum and at, for a time if you purchased anything you would get a copy of this illustration like a free poster elizabeth yes i have a mighty need <laughs> There's a there's a picture of the front of the museum later, so we'll talk a little bit more about its significance to the town in a little bit. We always talk about going to Point Pleasant because you're in West Virginia, yeah. and I my favorite 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 cryptid is Mothman. Yes, but we need I need it. He's a big deal down here, that Mothman fellow. West Virginians love their cryptids. I was going to say, you were like, West Virginia doesn't have much going on. And like, yeah, you guys don't have like a professional football team or anything, but you do have two cryptids for such a small state. I think we actually have four. What? Hold on. There's definitely more than this one. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please strap in while we prepare three (laughs) other mini episodes to go out periodically through the year while elizabeth talks about the rest of them okay so somebody on etsy is selling like a little poster with all the west virginia cryptids and there's quite a few it's real cute too i'll probably link this in the brief so um (laughs) please support this first there's also a grafton monster and grafton is much closer (gasps) to me yes it is we Okay, so some of these are not exclusive to West Virginia. We also have Sasquatch sightings, uh, Dog Man. There is a Sheep Squatch. Excuse me? <laughs> yes. That, I said Bless what I you. said. <laughs> if um, you know, you know. Let me see. What else is here? I'm trying to, like, zoom in. Snallygaster. Uh, zoom and a Snarly Yow. These are... And like, an Agua, which is like a turtle cryptid. Vermicious Knits. Yeah. But the main <laughs> ones, the main ones are that are like West Virginia specific. You've got the Mothman, mm. the Flatwoods Monster, the Sheep Squatch, <laughs> like Sasquatch, but a sheep. I don't know. Uh, Bad. Uh-huh. Okay. Is it bipedal? <laughs> yeah. It's a bipedal sheep. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> Unacceptable. It looks like it functions on like four or two legs kind of like dog like, man ugh, like a bear yeah ugh. and then we have the white the white thing which i think is also the grafton one i don't want to interrupt but i think it's also okay. time that we talk about since we talk so much about my hatred for terrible <laughs> terrible owls i also dislike bears but not when they're on all fours i specifically dislike upright bears <laughs> That's so specific. They're so yucky. They look like humans in a bear suit. Yeah. I can't. What It makes me physically feel nauseous. Mm-hmm. Yuck. Okay. Anyway, one day we will talk about the rest of the, the West Virginia cryptids, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll get there. I would like you to go back to the map. Okay. The sighting in Flatwoods is the most well-known sighting. Hence the name. Hence the name. Right. But there are a couple of other sightings. And they all occur basically, like, in the same week. Oh. Yeah. So there was another sighting. And this information comes from the Braxton County. Like, it's on, like, their website and everything. Oh. There was a sighting reported by Mrs. Audra Harper. Okay. If you look on your map, this sighting occurred before the Flatwoods September 12th sighting. And it occurred five miles north of Harper in the town of Heaters. So it is north and just a slightly tiny bit east. It's the it's the northern blue pin on our map. It's the best the bless the best place to stay in the winter. Yeah, Heaters. (laughs) (laughs) And so that's how it's spelled too. So Mrs. Harper claims to have seen the monster while on a walk through the woods near her home in the town of heaters harper (laughs) yeah harper and her friend were walking to a nearby store and they could have taken the road but Mm -hmm. whatever route that the road goes because it's like mountainous and everything it would have made yeah it would have made their walk a lot longer so Mm -hmm. they decided to cut through the woods because it cut like a significant chunk of chunk of time off of their walk i'm sure it's prettier too oh definitely so they're about a half of a mile into the woods and they notice a ball of fire on one of the hills that they're passing 
And they leave it alone. (laughs) (laughs) Harper dismissed it at first, assuming that it was like a neighbor with a lantern, like fox hunting. Mm -hmm. But when she looked again, she saw that the fire had vanished. And in the spot where the ball of fire was, she saw a tall, dark silhouette of a man-shaped figure. Mrs. Harper and her friend were absolutely terrified and just ran away. Is this during the day? Um, you know. Or do we not know? It didn't actually specify. I'm not entirely sure. I don't like it regardless. Yeah, because the other one we know <laughs> happened in the evening. Yeah. This one, it doesn't specify. There's one more, and it does specify that it was in the evening also. Mm-hmm. But these people didn't see the green glowing face, the pointy hood a- apparatus around its head. Yeah. They just saw a humanoid. And I'm actually thinking, the more that I'm, like, looking at this, I think it was actually the same evening of the 12th, just mm. before. Because they, okay. they were already in the woods. You know, the boys yeah. had to get there, you know. So I'm thinking it was probably around 7 p.m. on the 12th as well. Different woods, though. Yeah, I mean, it was five miles north. So either two different monsters, or it was, like, earlier in the evening, Mm -hmm. and then it just was like, never mind, I'll crash land over here. Yeah, because it just says, like, not long before the sighting on the farm. Like, that's what the article said. I don't expect you to have all the answers. Yeah, so. Then, on the 13th of September, just one day after, if you check your map, this is the last blue pin the southwestern pin Mm -hmm. this is strange creek and it's approximately 20 miles south from flatwoods fitting Mm -hmm. reportedly george and edith snitowski and their 18 month old son were driving through the rural area between clay county and braxton county when their car suddenly died mr snitowski tried to restart the car but it just wouldn't go It was nighttime, and the road was empty, just desolate. There was nobody else around. So while they're trying to decide what to do about it, because, like, again, if you know anything about West Virginia, like, this is remote. Like, you know, they're, they're not near anything. So they're trying to decide what to do when they smell a foul, sulfur like smell. Oh, so he's farty. And then the baby starts to cry. Ugh. Then, a strange bright light fills the darkness, and the couple sees a 10-foot-tall creature hovering in front of the car. The description that they gave is pretty similar to the description that Kathleen Mays and Jean Lemon gave. Mm -hmm. But what was presumed to be a spade or pointed-shaped hood was no longer on the creature at this point. Okay. They said that the head that they saw was somewhat reptilian and bony. Ew. Oh, that's worse. So like lizard people. Uh. They said the creature dragged its lizard-like hand <sighs> across the hood of the car before drifting away into the woods. Why? <laughs> I just picture, like, when you're at a store and you go by the fuzzy blankets and you're like, Ooh. Yes, that's what I imagine. Like, you just kind of gently, yeah. Ugh. So as soon I hate as, it. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as the monster is out of sight, the car starts with no trouble. <gasps> no. Ugh. And the couple <laughs> speeds away. <laughs> and then this account was given by Mr. Snitowski in 1955 to Male Magazine. Like, male like male and female. M-A-L-E Magazine. <laughs> so he didn't report it to the police, as far as I can tell. He was just like, wow. nope, 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 nope. Who is gonna, again, he probably was like, who's gonna believe me? Yeah. That this big lizard man mm-hmm. just came up to my car, caused it to stop, yeah. farted a bunch, <laughs> and then dragged his nasty hand across the hood of my uh-huh. Edsel and then laughed. But that leans where they were like, oh, like a claw-like hand, like mm-hmm. lizard hands, mm-hmm. maybe. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> so much. Yeah. So there were these three major sightings. They all occurred in, like, the same couple of days in 1952, and there's not been any sightings since. 
Yeah. Some people think that it was an alien and the ship crashed and then it left. Some people think it was just an owl (laughs) because of the spade shape. They think it looks like a barn owl. That's what I had in my brain. Yeah. Some people say that the light that everyone saw was likely a meteor. There had been a meteor in the area which had been observed across Maryland, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia on that evening. Okay. So a lot of people are like, no, they just, you know, saw this meteor flying by. But. And then got freaked out, basically. But when a meteor happens, it's not like the movies like it's not like a big close to earth yeah Yeah. it's like a shooting star right so they claim that there are three flashing red aircraft beacons that are visible from the area of flatwoods so basically they're thinking like the flashing lights overlapped with the meteor or something and caused like an optical illusion causing like the red tint on the face Mm. of the supposed monster i don't know if you would really be able to see aircraft beacons from in the woods like the woods are dense here i don't know but i was thinking that you know how when you shine a light like if you've ever gone spotlighting Mm -hmm. i'm a hick that's okay and you shine a light at an animal and it hits the like reflectors in the back of their pupils Mm -hmm. and it shines back out because there was a flashlight yeah one of them had a flashlight Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't, I assume if you do that to a terrible, terrible owl, it would shine <laughs> shine back at yeah. you. So this was also investigated by the Air Force. Ooh. And the Air Force <laughs> shares the theory that it was a meteor and owls. I super love that in the 50s, the, the Air Force was like, we have nothing else to do. It's not like we're in the middle of a cold war. Yeah, right. And the Korean <laughs> conflict. Yeah. So, let's look at your slides here. Go ahead and okay. go to it's slide number 4. This is the Ooh. Yeah, so this is the welcome sign to Flatwoods, which says home of the green monster. So they went with green monster. Yeah, it just depends. But he's not even green. You'll see, hold on. Cuz cuz his okay. clothing was supposedly green. Clothing in quotations. We don't know that he's wearing clothes. Right. Whatever he had on, he looked his green. folds. So that's the sign to Flatwoods. Braxton County, like I said before, has a museum. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see the visitor oh center slash museum. And <laughs> you'll see this little like photo op. <laughs> yes. So like you can put your heads in like Jean and Catherine's faces. What are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow, uh, voting. <laughs> But we gotta go. Yeah, but if you go to Braxton County, it's a big deal. Like, they have all this stuff all year round. They sell souvenirs. You know, the museum is a big tourist trap. Like, they really, like, eat it up. And the museum is, at this point, like, pretty critical to the local economy. I'm sure. They yeah. rely on this a lot for the community. So Everyone go to... To Flatwoods, to the Braxton County Visitor Center, please. Yeah. And support their local economy, because mm-hmm. we told you to. And they sell, like, they've got books about him, and they've got little, like, trinkets and souvenirs and stuff. But I demand that we go as soon as possible. I mean, it's not that far. Like, it's a I day know. trip from me. I know. <laughs> Maybe after, oh, uh, I want, well, after Halloween, I guess. Yeah. <sighs> Big sigh. Yeah. But that's the story. That is the Flatwoods monster. I guess I'm just confused because all of their, like, official merch here has him in, like, green robes with a red face. Mm -hmm. But that's the opposite of what was described. Right. Yeah. Well, because a lot of, like, my understanding was that it was just, like, a red light. Mm. So I don't know if you shine a red light on green skin if it, like, would reflect, refract, refract, like that. Well, red cancels out green. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like an alien more than a cryptid yeah which i think they're probably like heavily like laying into Mm -hmm. what i like it's like there's so much variation too 
because like in the little cutout like the photo op cutout he's got like these weird robotic arms yeah but then if you look in the window of the monster museum he's got like these long spindly like creepy slender man kind of arms but then right next to him the like cute version yeah they're not they're just like arms yeah it's just like a mannequin like like they took a red morph suit (laughs) I love him, though. Yeah. I don't love him as much as my dear, beloved Mothman. I imagine, like, when he hissed and walked towards that group of people, he was just <sighs> like, I just need directions. <sighs> I'm lost. And then when he got to the uh, to the car, he was like, you're not going to help me anyway. Yeah. Nobody helps me here. Yeah. <laughs> the state sucks. Yes. <laughs> I like that they didn't go with the lizard head. Yeah, yeah, they all go with the spade-shaped hood. And he does look humanoid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's bipedal. It's like a 10-foot-tall man-shaped thing. And so we think that that spade thing is a hood? That's what they think, yeah. Like, they think it's part of, like, some kind of clothing something. <sighs> they being the, <laughs> the scholars. No, they being all the people who saw him. It was. Like, I was going to say... The ancient scholars of the Flatwoods monster. Yeah, you know. Let me see here. Because there's a lot of, like, trinkets and stuff. Like, if you just Google the Flatwoods Google. monster, like, image search it, mm-hmm. you can see um, some of, like, the trinkets and stuff that they sell. And, like, it's like they do a convention Ooh. or something. I don't even know. Oh, my God. Some of these are, like actually terrifying yeah some of them are super creepy but i tried to include the ones that were like the most like relevant to the original story because there have Mm -hmm. there have been like movies and stuff based on this but i mean the accounts that we have it didn't hurt anybody didn't chase anybody or anything so like oh also also i forgot to mention the flatwoods monster is included in fallout 67 yeah which is based in west virginia Virginia. yeah if if you don't know that i think that it also has mothman in it and stuff Uh, oh my gosh i heard that that game was not great but i do kind of want to play it yeah that was the whole thing just for that that was the whole thing is like only people who like west virginia (gasps) enjoyed that game oh my god they have like little almost funko pop versions that's so cute also that thing in the window Mm -hmm. is a suit that someone can get in yeah yeah it is we have to go we must go i wonder if they're still open because of the because of the coronavirus Uh, probably let me see because some of the information i got was from the braxton website this looks to be like an amazon video that's on might be on prime Mm -hmm. small town monster presents a legacy of fear the flatwoods monster and the art for that looks like he is shirtless and just wearing a skirt yeah or coming out of a trash can. <laughs> so if you go to BraxtonWestVirginia.org, so this is the county's official website, they have a whole tab dedicated to the Flatwoods monster. And they have listed all of, like, the little roadside attractions, basically, that you can go to. So they've got the Monster Museum, the chair. Oh <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just love, so if you're not on the site, I just, I just got on the site here. It's, it looked very professional, mm-hmm. and at the top there's like little things you can click. So like lodging, things to do, events, blog, group travel, the Flatwoods Monster. Yes, <laughs> like as its own thing. <laughs> exactly. And if you click on that, it shows you. It's like there's a teensy tiny little synopsis. Oh, and here's the names of one of the other boys was named Neil Nunley. Mm. What um, a name. Yeah. And then it also lists that it was the Bailey Fisher's farm that it fell on. But it gives these locations of the museum, chairs, the spot, which is where the little cutout is. There's also a memorial for Kathleen May. And Oh, my God. So the spot. It's like a restaurant. Oh, I was hoping it was the spot. Oh, I was too, but no, it's like, uh, it, it has alien-themed alien themed subs. subs. Yes. So what is go, more us? If we go, we have to eat there. I mean, it will not compete with my beloved top-tier sub. Right. Everyone knows the greatest subs on the planet are at Bob's Sub in Clarion, Pennsylvania. That's right. They are so that is good. Free, that is free promotion for you, Ron and Paula. Yeah. I'm going to assume that the museum is open because it's also, it's just 
part of the visitor center and it's free Just um kind of walk to go. <laughs> plus we can go and get the braxton county monster lantern yeah yeah and there's a lot of like spooky paranormal stuff in this county you can like go That's bigfoot so hunting there and stuff Maybe we have to have a whole, like... Weekend? Like, a long weekend? Yeah, where we just, like, crypt- cryptid And time. it's right by the Lunatic Asylum, which you know I've been, like... I want to do a tour of the old Lunatic Asylum. So, it's by the... It's by Western West Virginia Penitentiary. No, this is the Lunatic Asylum. I misspoke on that a little bit. So, we didn't go to that, though. No, that was my bad. Um, okay, that's me... fine. I was like, we didn't go see I that. I was like, yeah. As soon as I said it, I was like, that's not right. But I just kind of rolled with it. I was going to say, would can you imagine getting one of these Flatwoods Monster Lantern Boys and, like, putting it at the top of your Christmas tree? Right. I love it. Please. Yeah. I mean, it's so weird because, like, West Virginia is so like under the radar but there's so much cool stuff here so we did like most of our of the first leg of our um, road trip there yeah Yeah, and that was just like the northwestern part like the northwestern panhandle like near i was just gonna say the panhandle yeah yeah but we didn't even go south like there's so much historical stuff scott and i have been talking about going to like a weekend trip to a place called Blennerhassett Island, which okay. is like a haunted island. Like there's a so much like cryptid paranormal stuff in this state. Like it's so cool if like that's your thing. Like seriously, road trip through West Virginia. Like it's super neat. And there's pictures of the asylum online. I was trying to see if we could like do a, a thing from your house to Flatwoods to Point Pleasant. Mm-hmm. to like a cryptid tour cryptid road trip honestly that would be the kind of like trip that is doable right now even with covid like it would probably be fairly doable how do we want to end this we don't do we've never done these i know it's a bonus we just talked about what we're reading so there's nothing not really no so i talked about my favorite cryptid is mothman uh-huh 100 percent do you have a favorite cryptid? That's tricky because I I love Mothman, but the the cryptid that we like we being Scott and I mm-hmm. like hear about the most and like yeah. seek out the most is probably Dogman. Yes. Which <sighs> it was so creepy one time I went to Liz and Scott's house and they were like we've been listening to all this stuff about the Dogman. You have to listen to it. And then she was like, and there's a, like a, a there's been a sighting or, a, or several sightings in Clarion, yeah. Pennsylvania, where we went to By college. Cook's Forest. So it was terrifying to listen to these accounts of like people seeing this terrifying thing in places that I know. Yeah. <laughs> like that was yeah freaky. There's another podcast that's called Dogman Encounters Radio that Hmm. scott really likes to listen to and we will link it in the bio yeah it's the the description it's a really great podcast it's i think it's it's kind of hit or miss because sometimes the every episode's a guest talking about Mm -hmm. their own encounters and sometimes it's very real and sometimes you're like this guy's full of it they, yeah. they try really hard to vet people, but some, I mean, people always slip through the cracks. I was going to say, how do you, yeah. how do you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but they're all supposedly true stories. It's super creepy sometimes. It's very creepy. Yeah. I enjoy it. We Like I said, we'll link it. Yeah. It's a great, 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 great podcast. Lots of, they have like some hundreds of episodes, so... Did I tell you that I want to make a Kikurumi and that I want it to be a Mothman <gasps> Kikurumi? Oh my god. I love that idea. I'm excited. Someday. Someday soon. Yeah. Now that I'm sewing for fun. Yes. Elizabeth. Yeah, Hannah. Where can the people find us? We are Briefcase Crimes, except for today we're Briefcase Cryptids, apparently. <gasps> well, Cryptid <laughs> Crimes. Cryptid Crimes, sure. <laughs> We're briefcase crimes across all platforms, including Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. You can find full episodes anywhere that you listen to podcasts, as well as on YouTube. If you'd like to support us monetarily, you can make a donation to us at coffee.com. That's K O F I.com forward slash briefcase crimes. Or you can purchase our book recommendations from bookshop.org, which is a wonderful website 
that supports local bookshops by donating 75% of proceeds to them, as well as giving us 10% through our affiliate link. That link and all the other ones that I have mentioned are able to be found in our link tree in our description. That's where you can find us. <laughs> That's very exciting. Yeah. This was a very impromptu trip. Yeah, it, it to very the cryptid much corner. <laughs> Elizabeth's cryptid corner. I was like, Hannah, let's record like right now. Give me an hour. Let's just do it. And I was like, tell me about your favorite cryptid. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> let's wrap this up. <sighs> Thank you all so much for listening. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Jorn? Jorn. <laughs>